Hello, YouTube. Hi. So the other day in my chat, someone came in and they said, Hey, I have a pretty good Yoimiya, but she does less damage than yours. And I was like, well, what's her build? And it turns out they really actually have a really good Yoimiya, but somehow their Yoimiya was doing less damage? Question mark? And upon further investigation, I found out that their Bennett is not built. Well, that was the reason why the Yoimiya wasn't doing much damage, my friend. So in this video, we will find out what is actually Bennett capable of doing and what's the difference he makes in a lot of teams. And we compare the damage output and the numbers and finally give my verdict. Now, before we start the testing, here are the testing rules. First of all, I will be running said character with Bennett in a duo team comp. Now, I know Genshin Impact is a team game where you have four characters, but I really just want to focus on Bennett's potential and his impact onto a certain character's damage output. So I will just be running the character and Bennett. Rule number two, I will be using crit rate food for efficient testing so that I don't have to crit fish. And now, before moving on, let's have a look at my Bennett build. So here is my Bennett build, pause if you want to. So my Bennett at level 90 and C6 provides around 1202 attack bonus, 20% additional attack bonus from the noblesse passive, and for every single pyre unit at C6, he provides 15% pyre damage bonus and 25% attack bonus from the pyre resonance. Keep in mind though, the Pyro Resonance does not come into play in the Duo Showcase because for elemental resonances to occur, we need 4 characters instead of 2. Now finally, without any further ado, let's move on to the damage comparison. Alright, so finally all the testing is done and here is the results that I finally found out from my testings. As you can see, the damage bonus that Bennett provides is actually very significant. To be honest, it is more than what I normally expected his damage buff to be. Now, don't get me wrong, I knew he has a very significant impact onto the damage numbers for a lot of characters, but I really did not expect to see this many high numbers. 
Now let's go one by one and like I will explain what my thought process was when I was calculating the numbers. For Yo Mia, it was a simple normal attack string. For Diluc, it was three normal attacks, one skill and one burst. For Miko, it was just a single skill tick. Full disclosure, my Miko is C6, so damage numbers are higher than normal. For Raiden Shogun, it was just her first initial slash of the burst. For Skaramush, it was a complete normal attack string plus a charge attack. For Child, it was Riptide and his burst slash. For Ayaka, it was the 20 ticks for her burst and a simple skill. For Eula, it was just the nuke. Now over here, we can see Bennett buff actually varies somewhere from between 52% to a whopping 150% on Deluxe skill. To me, that is just crazy. Like I had no idea it was that high, but I could definitely be wrong and I might have missed a thing or two. So let me know in the comments below, guys. And even keeping this number aside, a consistent number that popped out from this damage testing was around 65% to a 85% damage increase range, which is still very significant for a C6 Bennett. Now, full disclosure, Bennett is a really good character who unlocks most of his potential in his kit from just C1 and you can pair him with a prototype Rancor 4 star weapon and he is still a really good character that was released early on into the game. So if you're starting out and you need a really good healer, support, attack buffer, Bennett should be your pick. Another reason why I would prefer Bennett over a ton of different quote unquote niche supports for a lot of different DPS units is because a lot of those four star supports, yes, I'm looking at you, Kojo Sara, Goro, or Farazan, they unlock most of their potential at higher constellations and they become really good. Bennett, on the other hand, is a universal support for a lot of those units. Now, life is not always flowers and roses for Bennett. With the release of new Fontanian characters who scale significantly very much from HP, Bennett does not provide much needed buff. But despite being all that, even if you still main Fontanian characters and your character skills are from HP, you still need a healer. And guess what? Bennett is also a very good healer. So build your Bennett. That's it, okay? I, I don't want to hear anything else. Build your Bennett, guys. Life would be better. Okay, finally, moving on, let's address the elephant in the room. Should you see 6 your Bennett or not? I have been asked this question multiple times on my stream, on on various different discord servers because apparently i'm the bennett main so well let me tell you okay i don't want to go into a one hour rant about why bennett c6 is not that bad what people make it sound like so i'm just going to give you guys a tier list on whether you should c6 your bennett or not depending on your main here's the list basically i took my time and made a list about all the characters of the game until 4.4 yes cherry is releasing in 4.5 apparently so she's not included now there are only four characters that are really kinda affected in a bad way from Bennett C6, namely Razor, Yugla, Kaching, and Fremine. So if you actually main one of these four units, it is kinda bad for you. But in all honesty, Eula is also not that much affected because one of Eula's best team do not even include Bennett anymore. So finally, I will leave the decision whether you should say 6 year Bennett or not up to you because at the end of the day, you are going to be the person to play with your account and this is an irreversible change. With that being said, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.